Welcome, everybody, to NEC Now. I'm Ron Radner with the Northeast Conference. I'm here with St. Francis, Brooklyn's own Larry Moreno, Chauncey Hawkins, here to talk some Terrier hoops, some NEC hoops, get to know them a little bit better. Uh, I'm excited to have you guys on. And let's start first. How are you guys hanging in there during this quarantine? What's going on? We've been hanging in there, you know, just trying to work out, stay in as much shape as possible. Uh, speaking of our strength conditioning coach, Yuki, uh, he's been sending a bunch of programs, and I've just been trying to follow it to a T. What about you, Larry? Uh, same here. Sometimes I work out, try to stress a lot, especially because I had hip surgery. I just be relaxing, playing video games, eating. do do no homework? No homework. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right, well, good luck. I know you got finals coming up soon. Get through yeah. that. Um, let's talk about St. Francis College and how you got there. Chauncey, let's start with you. Now, I know you went to high school at St. Joseph's Regional. Uh, you, you're from, are you from Spring Valley? Did you grow up there your, your whole life? Uh, no, nah, not my whole life. I grew up – I moved to Spring Valley in about, when I was about 10 or 11. Uh, I grew up in the Bronx, then moved to Spring Valley. And then uh, from spring, when I was living in Spring Valley, I went to school in Harlem. Then after Harlem, I went to New Jersey. So, yeah, there's a lot of moving around. But, um, yeah, we got to St. Francis the old-fashioned way. Uh, we, usually nowadays, um, kids are getting offers from AAU and everything like that. I got it from high school. And thank God Coach Clive Bentick was there at a game we played, um, Third Grid Marshall, and he was watching some kid from there. Now, I came to the game late, and I played really well. Then they came to a couple more games, and I played really well there, and I was blessed with an offer. I'm glad you picked St. Francis, Chauncey. Now, let's go to Larry. Larry, you are you went to high school only a few miles away from St. Francis at Brooklyn Law and Tech. You scored 2,000 points in high school, all-state player. Did you want to stay in Brooklyn, or did it just work out that way? It's kind of both because I was getting looked at from another school and St. Francis came to a couple of my workouts and I got to meet all the coaches and I actually talked to my mom about staying home and going away as well. And she felt like it was best for me to stay home, especially because she was going to miss me and everything. And I talked to my coaches and they also felt like I should stay home, especially since in Brooklyn. So that's kind of how I went about it. And I also always told myself, that whatever school offered me first, that's the school I'm going to go to. And St. Francis happened to be the first school to offer me. That's great. I'm partial to Brooklyn, guys. I grew up in Brooklyn. My whole, you know, I was in New York City most of my life. So good to keep you here. Uh, let's look, go back to Chauncey now. Chauncey, in your freshman year, we're in, let's see, 2017-18. You come in to a guard-stacked terrier lineup with Rasheem Dunn. You got Jalen Jordan. You got Glenn Sanabria. Uh, so much talent, but you you made a con you made the contributions. You scored with six points a game coming off the bench. Um, but from those three guards, especially, what did you learn your freshman year that helped carry you uh, onto your sophomore season? Uh, well, let's say each person uh, from Glenn. I guess I'll say that I learned to be more uh, poised um, and like have a positive assist to turnover ratio from Jalen. I learned that no matter, they just got to keep shooting, shoot, shoot. And so regardless of if you miss or not, you know what I'm saying you got to continue to believe in yourself that you're going to make the next one. And with Rasheem Dunn, I just learned to have a relentless mindset of being aggressive and making sure to always put pressure on the defense. Those are good guys to learn from. So you headed to your sophomore year. You're making more contributions. You, you bump your scoring up over 11 a game. You have some really big games in the non-conference season. The team is up and down in, in league play. You finish, I think you finished 10 and 8 or 9 and 9, and nine maybe that year. Uh, you lose to Robert Morris in overtime. Tough loss in the, in, in the quarters. Um, and then you go on to play in the CIT in the post, your first postseason uh, taste. Were you happy with your progression as a sophomore from your freshman season? Uh, no, nah, not at all. I felt like I could have played a lot better. Uh, especially, I was, I was very inconsistent. And there were some times where I was inconsistent this year as well. And um, that's something that I really wanted to work on. Um, like you said, that stretch where we were up and down, 
I was up and down as well. And there was a stretch where it was like five or six games where I didn't play well. And I was sort of like a non-factor. And I think that could have helped us, help propel us to better seating, better standings. And then, yeah, that's it. Okay. All right, let's go over to Larry. Larry, you, that season, you were sitting that season. You have a hip injury. You redshirt your freshman season. From a guy who played, scored so many points in high school, was it, was it tough sitting, first of all? And then part two is, what did you learn from sitting that season? Well, it was definitely tough sitting. I remember when I first got the news about me having a rest shirt and me having to get surgery. I actually was crying in my room, but nobody really knew about that. And it was it was tough sitting, but I also felt like it was a plus for me because I got to work out like every day and work on my body. And I gained over like 25 pounds. And I felt like that was a big factor, especially coming into college. I also got to watch Chauncey and Glenn and O and Jalen play, and I felt like that was also good for me to learn from them and see how it is to how you have to play in the Division One level. So I felt like saying that was could have been like like it has its cons and pros. Let's talk about Glenn for a second. We've mentioned him. Uh, he's one of my favorites. He, the way he rep St. Francis and the NEC is both a student and an athlete. What did, how did he help mentor the both of you guys? Uh, Glenn's a funny guy. Like uh, outside of basketball, he's hilarious. So, uh, you know, just hanging out with him. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's kind of like having a bigger brother because you can, in order, like sometimes when you see people uh, like that, that are a year ahead of you, um, you learn from their mistakes so that you don't have to make them, you know? So it's like, he was always a, a good voice to have. He always encouraged you. And he's a great person on and off the court. What about you, Larry? What did he mean to you? For me, I feel like, like when you have like a leader on your team that does the right thing, he does his schoolwork. He's always playing hard, working out very hard. I feel like that's always great. And as for a team, because you don't have somebody that's a senior and he's slacking and he doesn't work hard, then you coming in as a freshman and you look at it like, oh, no, this program is not a good program because the seniors don't even do what they're supposed to do. So I felt like me coming in as a freshman and I see a guy that's working hard all the time, I felt like that pushed me a lot. And that's just like a great leader that you would want to have on your team. Awesome. All right. So we head into this past season. So Chauncey, you go from being one of the young bucks to now you're an upperclassman. So I, I'm guessing that there was a lot more expected of, of you this year from Coach Breka. Um, what did he expect from you heading into this season? <laughs> to be like Glenn. <laughs> yeah, he just expected to uh, just continue to lead, make sure you're doing everything properly. Uh, like for guys like Larry, Rob, uh, and newcomers to the team, just making sure that you you show and you provide a great example and just try to help speak to people, try to help coach guys on the floor. And, you know, I'm still growing at it because now it's like – it's like now it's, it's similar to high school now. So sophomore year, junior year, the same thing happened. So now I'm just – I'm getting more comfortable in the position and we're going to have a great year next year. All right. So for you, Larry, you're still dealing with injuries. You get a few games in there in December, but you're missing most of the season. The team also experiencing ups and downs in the early part of, the, especially the NEC schedule. Were you? Are you still? Are you frustrated at this point that you cannot get out there on the court? Yeah, I was. I was very frustrated, especially because sometimes in practice. My hip will feel all right, and then there's days where it just feels terrible and I can't keep going. And I also felt like I definitely could have helped out the team this year, but unfortunately my hip was drawing me back, and it was, it was very frustrating. We'll get back to you in a second, Larry. But for Chauncey, you're starting, you're starting to come into your own this year. You're making some big shots. You're getting a bit of a rep is making big shots at the end of the games. You, you have one. You take over the Hartford game a good win for you guys in the non-conference. 
you steal in a bucket to clinch the win over Presbyterian. You take over in, against SFU in a game. At the end, when there's two minutes left in the game, how much do you relish getting the ball in your hands? <laughs> uh, a lot. Larry, no. Uh, no, nah, I just – a lot. Because, like, in high school, there's no shot clock. So, in college, it's tough. But if you just – in my mind, if you just hold the ball – because I feel like I'm – one of the fastest guys in the league. If you hold the ball half court, it just – and everybody's guarding everyone. If they're not helping, it's it's dark. Like, that's what we say. It's dark for you. So, I would just go by, by you. If not, if you don't step up, I'm going to score. If not, I'll pass it off. And it's just uh, those last two minutes, I'm saying, just like we spoke about having poise and being a leader, my, my coaches, they encouraged me to make sure I get the ball because I was the best free throw shooter on the team. So, God, like, if we get fouled or anything, I'll be shooting the free throws. But well, I'm also a point guard, so I'll be able to make the best decision. And I also have to get better at making better decisions. But that's just how it is. It was like that in high school. Like, high school, I'll finish – I'll start the game, I'll finish the first half with two points, and I'll end up with 28 or something. So, it's like – I don't know. I like letting the game come to me. And at the end of the game, if I just – Make sure I want to give us the best chance we have to win. Love it. Let's get to you, Larry. All right. I know that February 8th, 2020 is going to always be a big day for you. That's the day you played the mount. Yes, you're back sir. in the lineup, right? <laughs> you go, you're back in the lineup. You drop 19 points in like 20 minutes against them. You hit five out of six from three. The place is going crazy. Uh, you win the game. First question is, how did it feel finally getting out there in front of your fans in a game like that when you're when you're locked in? Well, it felt amazing, especially since I didn't play in over two years, basically. Like I played in the beginning of the season, but that it was like not much. And for us to win against Mount St. Mary's, it was amazing because the first time we played them at their home, it was kind of terrible. And then for them to come in our home and we pull out a great victory. It just felt great. Did you feel locked in from the get-go of that game? When did you know that you had it and that you needed the ball? Um, well, I was locked in basically the whole day. You've been locked in for two years. <laughs> <laughs> My coach, like, like um, Coach Breaker, he asked me, like, even before the start of the game, am I sure I want to play? Because, you know, due to my hip injuries, I'm like, I don't worry about it. Like, I'm positive I want to play. So, I was, I was locked in from, from the jump. That was great. It was an awesome game to watch. Everybody was really happy for you. Let's go, let's go back to Chauncey. Chauncey, you end the season on a tear. You averaged 25 points a game over your last five games. You had 38 career high uh, against Central, close out the regular season, just – sitting at the free throw line most of the game, making free throws, because that's what you do. Um, <laughs> did the game sort of at the end of the year for you, is the game starting to slow down for you? Are you, are you reaching a point? I think you sort of alluded to this in the last question, where you feel that no one can hold you one-on-one -on -one at this point? Uh, yeah, you got to feel like that. Especially, like, one thing I really like, especially from being from New York, um, if there's a saying that the Black Widow, Ali Mo used to say, he said, um, if you don't think you're the ish, no one will. So I know Larry feels that way. Everybody on the team should feel that way because if you don't have that type of that type of desire, that type of competitiveness, then you're not really going to get far in life. And that's what Coach Breaker always spoke, speaks about. So, yeah, I feel like, I feel like that um, definitely. And it showed while we were playing. And also, I, like my um, pregame ritual, I, I went away from that because I was playing bad. And that's the worst thing to do. Like, if anybody's out there, they're in a slump, don't ever go away from your pregame ritual because that's, that's just – that's a blueprint for disaster. So, um, yeah, I went back to it, and we just started playing well. And I also had guys like Larry, uh, Nurse, like Joshua Nurse, a bunch of guys that were in my ear just – that kept motivating me. And it's something that you can't really – you can't put a price on or anything because guys like that, they're genuine. You know what I'm saying? And whether it be on teams or anybody you know, people don't people don't really show love like that. So I just thank Larry and Nurse for always being in my corner 
whether I have a bad game, good game. Like, I, Larry knows. I always – if I have a bad game, I always text him. I go to his room and go, yo, talk to me, blah, blah, blah. Especially when he was um, redshirting, he's always like that that little angel on my shoulder, like, yo, do this, do this, do that. So, yeah, I just love um, speaking to him. And, yeah, the game started to slow down tremendously. Let's talk, let's talk about your game. So much of basketball now takes place behind the three-point line. But you're, you're a little different in the fact that you finished second in the league in made free throws. You finished second in the league in, in uh, mid-range jumpers, made ones. So you're doing your damage in, in different places. Not saying you don't shoot threes, too, because you do. Do you Sorry. feel – Do you, <laughs> all right, I, I didn't want to say – but no, you're okay. <laughs> you're okay. You're all right. Um, do you feel, you know, your your step back game and your mid range game. Do you feel, first of all, that that's a dying art right now in basketball in general? Yeah, definitely. I remember one time I went on a visit. I think it, I don't want to disclose the name of the team, the coach, or anything. But I went on a visit, and like I I got to St. Francis off of being my pull-up, like, just been going to mid-range, being able to beat my man off the dribble and just shooting a pull-up. So, I remember I went on a visit somewhere, and they said, oh, yeah, all we do is take threes and shoot layups. So, I'm like, uh, okay, so what What are we, like, not what are we here for, but it's like, I'm going to take layups, but I shoot threes as well. It's just, if, you, if I feel like you beat your man, and it's so hard to just stop, they have to react over you. So, yeah. A uh, mid-range game is definitely the darn art. Is there a pro player that you compare yourself to as far as your style? Uh, I don't know. I'll let Larry ask, uh, answer that. I don't know because I don't, I don't want to compare myself to a player then. So I not even. I don't know. I like Isaiah Thomas. Uh, wow, that, that's exactly what I was, that's what I was thinking too. <laughs> yeah, I like Isaiah Thomas. You know what I'm saying? He's tough. Uh, yeah, Zed Thomas is tough. But, yep. All right. Yeah. That's good. Not a bad comparison. So, I'll uh, go back to you, Larry. When you signed with St. Francis, Glenn, Glenn Breaker called you. You said you're a true New York City guard. <laughs> First of all, what does that mean to you? Well, me knowing Breaker, I feel like he means, like, as a New York. Like, usually New York kids are looked at, like, tough. And he loves using the word grit, and he, <laughs> so I feel like he, that, that's what, I feel like that's what he meant, especially because like a lot of times when I get interviewed, people ask me like, "Oh, when you playing against a bigger team or whatever, like how do you feel?" And I always tell them like, "I don't really care about anybody's name. Like at the end of the day, like we got to play basketball. So you got to prove to me as to why you think you're better than me or why everybody else think that. Like, at the end of the day, I have to play against you, and I'm not going to back down to anybody. So I feel like that's what he's doing as a true New York point guard or a true, a true New York player in general. When, as you were growing up and playing on the playgrounds and stuff, was there, was there a player that you tried to model your game after? Not really. Oh, I'll say my, my, my uncle, like, that's kind of who I looked up to playing mainly. And I also looked up to Kobe. But I never modeled my game after him. I just modeled, like, my mindset. But my uncle would probably be the person that I try to model my game after because, like, he shoot threes. He plays with a attitude, like, that nobody could guard him and everything. And that's basically how I am, too. Have you – Let's go on a tangent here for a second. Have you guys been watching the last dance with the, the with Bulls and Michael Jordan? W yes. What have you learned from watching Michael Jordan, how he handled himself back in the day? What have you learned from this documentary so far? Oh, okay. So, like, I like when he's in practice, like, being a leader, you got to hold everybody accountable. And some, sometimes, like, if I'm speaking to guys and I – and guys want to do their own thing, I was sometimes just like, all right, it's your life. But now I understand, like, no matter if they think you're annoying or anything, just make sure you keep staying on them. So, at, so from watching him, it's like you got to be relentless in your communication, um, relentless in, in speaking to them, and just making sure that everybody's on the right page. What about you, Larry? 
I, I didn't watch it. <laughs> you didn't watch it? Okay. Yeah. Larry, you should I mean, watch I, it. I have, I have an idea as to, like, just have a person he is, but I, I, I haven't yet to watch it. All right. All right, let's go back to the season. Um, your junior year, you're back at Robert Morris again, and you're in the quarters. I know I see the looks on you guys' faces. We got to go through this a little bit. So you have a first half tough, tough game. They're playing great defense. Um, uh, Chauncey, was it, yeah, Chauncey, you hit like the half court shot right before halftime. Um, right. So you get a little Light closer. Light <laughs> um, then in the last minute, you lead a comeback. You're down seven. You cut it to one. You hit a three. You're right there. You almost get a steal on, on, a, on an inbounds. Comes down to the last possession. Larry, you find the ball. They're playing great defense. And, Larry, you find it in your hands. You got to take some – it's like kind of a, a circus shot almost, but maybe for you it isn't. At the buzzer, kind of hits the backboard, goes in. I watched it like five times yesterday just to see it again. When that ball left your hands, do you think that was going in? I, I actually did think I, it was going in. Like, when I threw it up, I was hoping it would hit the backboard and bounce in, but I realized I didn't shoot it high enough. I feel like if I shot it high enough with a little bit more arc, it definitely would have fell in. But I think I had fell, and I just looked up, and I'm like, damn. I hit that in drop. Sean, it was, uh, since it's been two months since then, um, I know it's a tough way to end your season. Is there – have you been able to put the the game in perspective in in a in a sense that you did against Robert Morris what no other team was able to do in the playoffs because they kind of rolled in their in their next two games to win the title? Did you feel that your team was right there? Yeah, I knew we were playing the champions. Like they were, uh, our games with them have probably been the toughest games that we played against anyone the entire year. Uh. And, like, that game in itself was just – it was just tough, you know, because then hindsight is twenty twenty. so you're thinking about all the things you could have done right. I still have, like, to this day, I still have, like, nightmares of the game. Like, not nightmares, but, like, just thinking about, damn, I should have done this, I should have done that. And, you know, that's why the basketball is an amazing game because you live to fight another day. And thank God, I got, one year. Thank God I got another year with this guy. And we know that feeling. You know what I'm saying? So we're not trying to feel that feeling again. Yeah. So after that game, I'm going to read you a quote. Um, it's kind of cobbled from a few quotes from Andy Toole, talked about you after this game. I want to get your reactions. I'm going to read this word for word here. Uh, he said about, about you, Chauncey, he's relentless. He's all over the place. He puts so much pressure on you. There's never a time he's not involved in the action trying to make a play. You feel that that's an accurate depiction of what you are as a ball player? Uh, yeah. Because, like I said before, um, my sophomore year, those games that I wasn't um, – that I wasn't a factor, it was because I was strictly focusing on scoring. But I, now this year I was trying to be more focused on not just scoring, let's say getting my teammates involved, playing defense. And, uh, yeah, I just appreciate that. Those are kind words from a decent man. Like, those are – that's – those are, I appreciate that, Mr. Tool, Coach Tool. <laughs> That's great. All right, so Chauncey, uh, you score your thousand point in the game. Uh, you end the season. You lead St. Francis in scoring, assists, steals, third team All Conference. How how much did you, um, or how good did it feel to be recognized by the league's head coaches a, as an All Star? Uh, it felt good, but you know we can't ever be satisfied. Next year we just want to do a lot better because we should have. Like I'm not happy with how this year turned out at all. Um, Cause like me, I set a lot of high expectations for myself. So, and you have to be your worst critic. So um, yeah, I'm not happy with this year at all, but next year, God willing, we will be better. Hopefully this whole um, coronavirus thing blows over and yeah. But thank you guys. I appreciate them. I appreciate the recognition. Appreciate everything that comes my way. So I know Chauncey's a little, he's, he's down because, you know, he wanted the team to do better and stuff, but Larry, you watch him work day in and day out. How proud were you and the other guys on the team of his accomplishments this season? Well, I'm always proud of everything Chauncey do, especially practicing with him because we, in practice, we basically just be killing each other. <laughs> and, 
So like I know like the hard work that we both put in and him being the leader, he also probably the hardest work on our team. So every time that something um happens, like any accomplishment he does, I feel happy for him because he works his ass off and I feel like he deserves everything. So to me, Chauncey, the biggest award you received this year was after the season when you were named uh, an Athletic Directors Association Scholar Athlete. There's only 11 nationwide named this, and it's a combination of athletics and uh, academic success. How much did that mean to you to be honored in that way? Uh, it was, you know, it's funny. I was, it, it meant a lot to me, but I just wanted to show my mother because my mother think like, not that she, like, she doesn't think I'm the worst kid, but <laughs> she's never satisfied. And that's why I can never be satisfied because, like, let's say I don't do the dishes or something. I'm like, Ma, are you serious? Like, she'll make, she'll nitpick at something so little. I'm like, Ma, are you kidding me right now? Like, so just getting that award and making her proud because she's a principal, she's an educator. It was, it was amazing. Um, and then I didn't even know that only 11 people got recognized. So that was even, it's like more prestigious. So that was dope. So you've already graduated, correct? You're working on your master's degree? Uh, honestly, I have to speak to Gabby about that. <laughs> I have to speak to so, my advisor. But um, yeah, I think I'm finishing up my bachelor's. I'm, I'm taking master's courses this next, uh, this next semester. Yeah. So you're, you're, uh, you're getting your master's degree in accounting? Yes, sir. So what's the what's the game plan for you? One, we'll get back to next season, what's coming up on the court. But when it's all done, what are your plans going to be? Uh, God willingly, professional basketball player. Um, but if that doesn't work out, honestly, I don't want to be an accountant. Uh, I don't think I somebody that's just going to sit behind a desk all day. I'm not that type of person. I like going out, I like being adventurous. So I'm charismatic. I'll speak to you. Um, very personable, but uh being an accountant it's like the language of business so you'll be able to go into a lot of different fields from marketing to economics finance and so speaking to my teachers about it they love me so like i know that if i wanted to be an accountant i'll be able to have a job that would do that would do that they'll be able to um network and we'll be able to plug in but i have my best friend he has a, a clothing company called cyi soon the brand count yourself in something not nothing and I'd love to work with him because we both started from nothing. Not not nothing. Not saying we're coming from, oh, we don't have clothes on our backs, but, like, started from nothing where people didn't believe in us. And, you know, his brand is something I love to work for. I love to help him achieve his goals as this, he supported me, helped me achieve mine. Awesome. I love it. All right, Larry, back to you. We got to get to – we got to get to the trick shots and everything that's going on with you right now. So you, you've, you've gained some notoriety, let's say, during the quarantine. No. You're out there on the playground with your mask on. Uh, I looked at your Instagram this morning. You're like about 18,000 followers now. You've been on ESPN.com and SportsCenter social media. Pretty much everything now. All right, let's, let's start by saying, when did this all start? Has this been something you've been doing for years, or is it just a recent phenomenon? So – I've kind of, like, my whole life, I kind of made, like, like crazy shots. Like, say I'm in practice or something, and, like, there's the ball rolling something, like I'll throw the ball and to the other side and I'll go in, like. And it's, like, something I've always done my whole life. And even in high school, like, I have some videos on my Facebook. Like, I've made, like, shots, like, kicking the ball in, 360 off the wall and everything. But when this really took, like, when I really decided to, like, do this was last year, around this time. I made a shot backwards from half court, and I realized like I could do it a lot, like constantly. So I felt like this was a way that I can like increase my following on Instagram and gain a lot of popularity and everything. So I just kept kept going and kept going, especially especially around quarantine. Like I've been trying like to go viral basically since last year, and go on Sports Center and everything, but. It never happened till March 25th, I believe. It was the first time that Overtime posted me. And after Overtime posted me, Sports Center posted me. And it just took off from then. And I just, I felt like I just had to keep going and keep going. Do you like wake up in the middle of the night with ideas for new shots? Like, how do you come up with all these? <laughs> well, I actually don't. 
So let's say I told my brother, let's go to the park and let's do a shot. There's some, like, it, it's hardly any time that I, like, know a shot in my head. But usually when I do go to the park, like, I have to think about, like, oh, what are we going to say? Or oh, when then I got to think about the shot. Because one thing that people don't know, like, when you want to go viral, like, it's not always a shot that makes it go viral. It's kind of like the dialogue behind it. So that's like basically what me and my brother have been looking into more and more. Now that I'm doing the church shot, now that they're going viral, is that it's like basically what I'm going to say to go viral. And then I got to think about a crazy shot to make. Because like before, before, like I made some crazy shots, but I felt like the reaction and stuff, it wasn't good enough. And then I felt like my brother wasn't doing it the right way or <laughs> it, it's, just, it's, just, it's just a lot of stuff. So now that I know how, like how it is and now that I've kind of like got contact with House of Highlights and Sports Center, like whenever I send them a video, like they see it. So now it's all about the dialogue and basically making a crazy shot. And I, I, I just, I, it's just like come to me when I'm on the basketball court sometimes. And you, every one of these shots you do on the first take, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> the only time I ever made a shot on my first take was the park by the BQE. It was closed, so I was not going to, like, keep, like, going over the gate. So I told my brother, this is exactly what we are going to do, and I shot it and then went in. I, I was like, if I if I, I have, like, the whole video, is like, 30 seconds. Like, I was surprised myself. Like, I'm like, there's no way I just made it my first try. But, like, realistically, like, there's no possible way I can make all them shots my first try. Like, What's the ultimate trick shot? Is there one you have in, in, in your pocket that you're waiting to, waiting to do that you haven't done yet? No. Nah. I, like, like I said, I don't, I don't have ideas, like, in my head. It's just, oh, I, I got one that I'm, that I'm thinking about doing. It's kicking the ball from, from full court. But – I, I don't want to do that yet because I don't know if it's going to take me a while. And, you know, I have hip problems and I will have to kick it with my left leg. So I'm, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm just waiting to see if, I, if I'm going to do that one yet. You going to try one of these in a game next season? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to the Terriers. One of the things – I've been around this league a long time and St. Francis always has great guards. Like, from the, the get-go – from and I don't know how many of the legends you've met, the Ricky Cadells and Akeem Bennett's and Ray Minlin and Tory Cavalieri, so many of them. Um, Chauncey, how how does you how do you feel knowing that your name could potentially be added to that list of all time great St. Francis guards? How, is that something that would mean a lot to you? Uh, yeah, it would mean a lot. I mean, that's the ultimate goal. That's not the ultimate goal, but that's one of the goals. You just want to make sure you make your imprint on wherever you land. Like in high school, I was never thought to be the like lead. I could have been the leading scorer, but my coach didn't let me. You know, Larry knows this. Like when, because Larry was a he was tough. Like yo, get forty and a half, and then you won't play the rest of the game. So it's like yo, let me get eighty. Like why you can't just just let me continue going? But um, at, now that I think about it, it's smart that he didn't. Because God forbid you get hurt or anything. But, um, yeah, I was the second all-time leading scorer at my high school. Um, and so here I want to make my imprint as well. Just continue to just do what got you here. Awesome. All right, Larry, let's get back to you. Uh, I have to know, keeping it light here, what, what is light cheese Larry? What does this exactly <laughs> mean? Explain this to all your fans watching now. I uh, well, in high school, like – I always like that that saying been around for like for like for a very long time, but it basically it basically means like it's easy. And in high school, like whenever I play a game, I like, say I'll have like let's say forty points or something, and I'll put it as my put like an update of status or something. I'll put light cheese right after it. And me and my friends, um, like we just kept saying it. And when I um. When I started doing the trick shots, I always said light cheese. So I just felt like that's a way for me to um, basically not not market myself, but like I just made that my name. And that was a way for me to like to get everybody to like, like join in on the movement by saying light cheese. And it, it, it means it's easy, like easy work or light work. 
Where did Dominican Mamba start? That Jeez. started in middle school or like my freshman year of high school. And it was we was outside and I had a I had my Kobe um shirt on and my friend had called me um the Dominican Mamba because he know like Kobe's my favorite player. So after that, like I always called myself it and Let's say around my sophomore year of high school, that's when I kind of, like, started blowing up. Like, I always put, like, hashtag. It's the same way as Light Cheese. Like, I'll put hashtag Dominican Mamba. So then Brooklyn News and everybody, like, started recognizing that people call me um, the Dominican Mamba. And my coach, whenever they updated our games and our stats and everything, they'll put the Dominican Mamba strikes again. So that, that's, that's where it, like, took off from and it started in high school, though. and now, like, even when I was in college, like, Brooklyn News came, and they interviewed me when Kobe had died, which kind of, it was kind of sad for me and everything. Like, the, when I first heard the news, I was, like, in tears for, like, the whole day. But um, I felt like I just take it as motivation and everything. But that's basically where it started in high school, and I just kept saying it for my whole life. Cool. Very cool. Chauncey, I know that you're, the team has been involved in the community, and I know you work um, in the community, and you've volunteered and mentored uh, at your mom's middle school. You said she's principal, right? Yes, sir. So how much does working with the children mean to you? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> you got to love the kids. Like, honestly, um, when you think about when you grow up, you always want that person that you see doing well or anything to come around you and spread positivity. And a lot of kids that are in impoverished neighborhoods, they don't get to see, like, Larry, me, a bunch of kids on our team, young black males, Spanish males, minority males doing well for themselves. You know what I'm saying? You either, like, coming up, you either on the block or you shooting a rock, you dribbling a rock. So it's like, and seeing a lot of my friends, like, I had a friend that died doing stupid stuff that you don't, you don't need to be doing. You know what I'm saying? So anytime I get to talk to kids or like sign something or take a picture with someone. It's like, yeah, I love that. Cause it's like to actually work and have people want to be in your presence. That's like, I really want to be in their presence. Cause like, I know that feeling where you just want to, um, you want to be embraced and you want positivity to look forward to. You know what I'm saying? So talk, talking to those kids, mentoring them, just even just chilling out with them, playing the game with them anything it's just it's an amazing experience and they they inspire me as much as I inspire them I love it I love it before I forget I want to ask you now you're sitting in a room here it looks like a recording studio behind you what's <laughs> what's the story behind all are you cutting an album what's going on uh nah not yet that's only uh <laughs> after basketball but um nah oh uh, my stepfather Artie Green he's a a producer <laughs> platinum, platinum records with Ja Rule and Ashanti. Uh, he put out this um, this song, 20 Seconds or More, with uh, um, with Hip Hop Public Health, Dougie Fresh, and it's actually Andrew Cuomo just tweeted it. It's a dope song. It spreads awareness about the coronavirus and how to uh, prevent uh, spreading it or catching it. And um, he did an amazing job. And, you know, he doesn't get the recognition that he deserves, but Hopefully, when this comes out, he will. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and then also, uh, I featured on a couple of tracks, you feel me, a couple <laughs> of songs when I was younger. Um, I performed at the White House during Barack Obama's campaign, uh, met Michelle Obama, met a bunch of celebrities, and it was just an amazing experience. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, shout out to him and his studio. He has good lighting. That's the only reason I'm here. <laughs> all right if we get you on again are you gonna you're gonna do a number for us can you sing a little for us next time oh no nah, i rap baby all right all right <laughs> we'll do it all right we'll get it going all right let's back to basketball what do we expect from the terriers next season let's go larry first well i think that that next year is definitely going to be a great year for us because we have a lot of people coming in I'm hoping I get better. We got Chauncey coming back and seeing you there, Rob, Higgins, everybody unique. And I feel like this year, like, it was a total new team. So, like, everybody still had to learn how to play with each other and learn, like, what 
certain kids, like certain people like to do. And it's just like we have to build our chemistry up. So I feel like after a whole year of that and hopefully me getting back in the lineup and everybody else that's come in, we have a couple kids that are tall and have a lot of length. So I feel like next year is going to be a way better year. Senior year, Chauncey, what are we what are we looking at? Uh, you guys already know what our goal is. We've never been able to accomplish it in St. Francis history. We just want to we want to make history. Um, also, I just want, we just I just hope we come back. Everybody comes back hungry. You know what I'm saying when we first get there, we just got to know why are we doing this day in and day out. We have to move forward and not take any steps back because sometimes. When you're in a drought, you can't take a step back. You get lazy. Even in quarantine, your mindset changes, and you're like, damn, like, I just read something on CNN saying that this can last for two years. So it's like, damn, what's, like, what's the point of me working out? What's the point of me doing this? Just con continue to be relentless in your mindset, like you said, have that mama mentality. You know what I'm saying? So I just I think we're going to have a great season. We have a lot of guys that are coming in. They're hungry. Like, I've been in contact with them. And – we just got to do the best we can, you know, and leave it all to God's hands and our hands. So we'll see. We'll see. Let's talk about Coach Breaker for a second. What is it about him that enables the Terriers to be competitive year in and year out? Well, all right, I'll go first. <laughs> well, Coach, <I> thought, <laughs> Coach Breaker, like, he's – He's like a guy that he's not like gonna let you slack and let you do what you want. Like he doesn't care about how you feel or anything. Like he's gonna push you to your max. And I feel like that's important because there are some coaches that, for example, you see Chauncey's our best player, right? So in practice or something, he'll probably not let Chauncey do certain things and let him rest or whatever, or just let him do whatever he want. Like so, um, Breaker is not that type of guy. He's going to make him be the leader and make him still work hard and make him do what he has to do. And I also love that he, like, he doesn't only care about basketball. Like, he wants to prepare us to be men. So, I feel like that would build our character and make us better players and better individuals as well. So, I feel like he plays a large factor in our team and the whole – St. Francis College in general because he, like, looks at everything from other athletes like, and he looks at everything, like, how we will be in the future. So I feel like that, that, that's great from, from a coach. Chauncey? Oh, well, he's competitive himself. You know, um, he's, he's a competitive coach. You can see it when he gets fired up on the sidelines. Uh, and – just in practice and everything, like Larry said, he pushes you to the limit. Oh, did he, did he leave? I think we lost Larry. All right, you keep going. We'll keep going through. All right. He comes so, back. Um, he, um, he just pushes you to your limits. And he'll he'll get under your skin. But, like, with certain – me, I like when somebody gets under my skin because it makes me go harder. So, like, um, I love how he, he's on you. Him, Coach Ganulin. His supporting staff, Coach Claude Vanzig, uh, Jamal Womack, they do a tremendous job of just um, of just pushing you to your limits. And Breaker, Coach Breaker, he's a he's a funny guy. He wants you to do well on and off the court. And uh, yeah, I love I love his pursuit, and he wants it just as much as we do. Um, did y'all hear anything I said? Nah, we yeah, we got you. you. You're all good. All good. Oh, all right. <laughs> Right, last question for you, for both of you. We'll start with you, Larry. What does being a St. Francis College Terrier mean to you? Well, like, I, well, me, especially growing up in Brooklyn, I feel like me being a St. Francis Brooklyn Terrier is probably the best, like, fit for me because I grew up here and I like the slogan, Brooklyn Tough, and I feel like that's basically my whole mindset, especially me growing up in Brooklyn. So I love the fact that I'm a Brooklyn Terrier, and I'm hoping that in the future they would basically – not they, but I will make a great impact for the school. Chauncey, what about you? Uh, so St. Francis has a I, – I see it as like an underdog school. 
you know, it's a small school, small college, big dreams. And a lot of the players like Larry, me, Rob, like we're, we've been overlooked, you know? So um, going to this college, it, it fits perfectly because it can get overlooked, but no matter how many people can downplay or anything, we just got to always try to find a way to prosper and succeed. And St. Francis is the epitome of that. So come, going, coming here is just, it was a great fit. And like you see, we may not have the best facilities, we may not have anything, but we're always going to compete. We're going to make sure that, A, y'all going to respect us and stuff like that and Brooklyn, be Brooklyn tough. And yeah, St. Francis is just, it's a tremendous atmosphere, tremendous school. You know everybody, and it's dope. I'm glad I made this decision. That's it. There's the commercial. You just did a commercial for your college right there. Put it on the air, <laughs> you two guys. <laughs> Listen, this has been really fun spending time with you. I really enjoyed this. Uh, I hope you stay safe, you and your families. Uh, we all get through this, and we see you guys back out <coughs> on the court this fall. I'm really excited about what to expect from St. Francis this year. Um, but thanks for joining us, and I hope, I hope we get to talk to you again soon. All right? Yes, all sir. Right. Appreciate you. Thank you, Ryan. All right. This is Ron Ratner from the NEC, Chauncey Hawkins, Larry Moreno, and this was NEC Now.